The Gospel of John is one of the most important Gospels uh, in the New Testament, partly because of the fact that the Apostle John writes this Gospel to underline the fact that Jesus is God, the full representation of all that God is. And that's central to the doctrine of salvation. And as we do this study in the Gospel of John, it is a rich study. And there is the great I am statements of Jesus, number of statements that says, I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. All of these I am statements, John is being inspired by the Holy Spirit to let everyone know without question who Jesus is. And today it's, it's in the first chapter of John that John is anointed by the Holy Spirit to say some things about the Lord Jesus that though have the ring of high reason about them, have tremendous implications for where we live in day-to-day -day Christian lifestyle. I had a pastor and mentor from years ago that would be teased at times about describing his feeling that some people are saved and then some people are really saved. And he would go on to say that, <clears throat> but the older I get, the more and more I'm convinced that there's not just one of, that's not just one of my little quirks, but it's true that there is a church within the church. And I think that there is something in this anointed presentation of Jesus out of John 1 that will give us insight into the really saved. Perhaps one of the most famous scriptures out of this section is the 12th verse. And if you can't say it by memory, I'd love for you to commit it to memory. It's John chapter 1, verse 12. As many, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, the daughters of God, to those who believe in his name. Now, we understand that to receive Jesus means to go beyond believing in Jesus. Isn't it James that says even the devils believe? If you did a study in the Gospels, you could probably come up with about 12 to 15 different things that indicate that the devils knew certain things, believed certain things about Jesus. In fact, that would move you to pray for the church that we would at least believe as much as the devil believes. And so it is necessary for a Christian to go beyond just the point of just believing, to truly be a member of God's family. There is an act of receiving Jesus. And I, I want you to know that in the language that the Holy Spirit gives John to use here, it is not a passive receiving where there's nothing I really do about it. I'm given the gift and it's mine. I'm, I'm just sitting here. He gives it to me and it's mine without any response. That's not what's being said here. The receiving of Jesus is an act of receiving. There's a required response. So the basic definition of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, you'd agree with me that John says a Christian is someone who's received Jesus. Now, I really like the sound of that, but John muddies up the waters a little bit with the next phrase. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to be sons of God, daughters of God. That's not only referring to our position before God, our standing of righteousness before God, but these have practical implications. There is a power, a right, an authority that affects their daily lifestyle. So how does that muddy up the waters? Well, that winds up saying that if there's no power in my life, if I do not have a sense of authority about me to be living the lifestyle of Jesus, living for him and walking in his spirit, then that means that I probably haven't truly received him. Are you receiving Jesus today? We need to come to grips with what it means to be empowered receivers of Jesus who are actively living out lives that speak of our membership in God's family. The word that the Holy Spirit inspires John to use here, he gave the power to become the sons of God, the right to become sons of God, is the Greek word exousia. It's a different word than what we find in one of my favorite verses in Acts 1.8, where Jesus says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Greek word there is dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. It's, it's a picture of energy, tremendous energy, the energy of heaven, the power of the Holy Spirit. This dunamis is a picture of energy, tremendous power, supernatural power of the Spirit of God. In contrast to that, the word exousia is a word that describes authority, the God-given right, and you could use the word anointing. And though it is a different word than the dunamis, dynamite power in Acts 1.8, this exousia, authority and anointing, requires just as much of a moving of the ministry of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit as the word dunamis. You see, it's impossible to receive Jesus without responding to the person of the Holy Spirit. So the test is, the question is, are you being empowered to live a life that speaks of a son, a daughter of God? 
Are you living a life that speaks, that testifies, that proclaims that you belong to God's family? That's, that's the test. Let me read it again. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, to those who believe in his name. Now, I received Jesus when I was eight years old at a tent meeting in Kingston, Jamaica, sometime in 1964. Um, we were missionaries there, and my dad was pastoring the church, and I call it a tent meeting because that was our church. It was a tent. But receiving Jesus, as John is writing about it here, is not talking about an experience just simply that I had when I was eight years old or an experience that you had whenever you gave your heart to Jesus and received him into your life. There's something more here than just the, okay, I see that God's offering Jesus, and I see who you are, and yes, I open up my heart to you. There's something more to this. And as we read the text, we'll come back to that. Here, here's how the gospel begins. The beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, let me pause right there, because that's an important statement. And the Word, the Logos in the Greek, is referring to the person of Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, I want to tell you that there is actually a cult that tries to pass themselves off as the true Christian faith, and their Bible says, in the beginning was a Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. That is tampering with Scripture to the extent that you do away with the deity of Jesus Christ. That particular cult doesn't believe that Jesus is God. And so you've got to be careful with that. But that's, it's an important point and it's an important message throughout the Gospel of John that John is saying Jesus is God. He's the full representation of all that God is. He continues, verse 2, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. He's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the creator. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Some translations will say that the darkness could not overcome it. John's witness, the true light, here's what he says about John the Baptist. John uh, chapter 1, verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus to come. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Now that's, don't you just love that verse? God has accepted the responsibility to light every man that has ever come into the world. And who is the light? Jesus is the light. God has accepted the responsibility to confront every man, every woman who has ever come into the world with the person of Jesus. That's powerful. In fact, you could say that when you have questions about other faiths or people who through their whole lifetime may never be able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, even if it's at the end of a person's life, God, our heavenly Father, is faithful to give every man, every woman, an opportunity to respond to the light of the world, Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying when he says, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Powerful, powerful verse. And it shouldn't let us off the hook. We are called to preach the gospel. We're called to reach out to hidden peoples. We're called to share the, the life-saving message of Jesus Christ crucified on the cross, that he died for our sins. And as we accept Jesus as our Savior, we have the gift of eternal life. That's an important message. And we all need to continue to be tenacious about sharing that message. But it's true. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He continues, verse 10, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But then here's the key verse, verse 12. But as many as received him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God, the daughters of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, we've begun to understand that salvation is not an experience, not a limited event to the first time you receive Jesus. But we've begun to understand that salvation is a lifetime 
process. That salvation is something that began the moment we responded to Jesus, but it is something that is continuing. Is that not true? We understand that salvation is far more than me kneeling there in Kingston, Jamaica as an eight-year-old and initially responding to Jesus. But salvation encompasses everything that God's been doing in my life since then. Salvation is released when I responded to Jesus. But I want you to see that it's a continuing process. Salvation is released as I respond to Jesus today. Now, you probably know where I'm getting to, so why don't I just go ahead and say it? The power to be a son of God, the power to be a daughter of God, is only given in verse 12 as Jesus is received. What that winds up saying is that it is not what happened to me when I was eight years old that determines whether or not I am actively engaged in a powerful living out as a son of God today. It's what I've done with Jesus today. It's how I've responded to Jesus today. Have I received Jesus today? And in the context, I want you to see that the way John writes, there's such practical implications because he describes Jesus in this section of scripture that we've read as the word, as the light of the world. It is only as I'm responding to Jesus, the word, Jesus, the light, that I put myself in a position where I'm given power, the right, the sense of authority to be a son of God, a daughter of God. What does that word say to you? The word is the logos of God in philosophic terms. It is the complete entire will of God placed into a person. Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is the full revealed will of God. Very practically, Jesus is the Word of God to me. And it's only as I hear Jesus that I hear that will of God for my life. It's only as I respond to Jesus, the Word, that I hear what God is saying to me about my marriage, about my finances, about my... And you put in the things that you need to be hearing about. And it's only as I'm receiving that Word that I then have a power in my life to live out what it means to be a son of God. Getting down to where we live, it says, as I receive Jesus, the word, Jesus, the light on a daily basis, that I will have the power of the Holy Spirit to live for Jesus and to live for others instead of living for myself. If you really have received Jesus, then I ought to be able to see it in your life. I don't care what happened to you three months ago and whatever experience you had. It's in receiving Jesus today as the Word of God that represents God's instructions for your life that tells me whether or not you really have received Him. Because if you've received Him, then you will be receiving His Word, Him as the Word. And then the words that He speaks to you that relate to your finances, that relates to your marriage, that relates to your work life and to all the other practical areas of your life. I'm talking about a lifestyle that's filled with joy. I'm talking about the people who have that sense of authority about them and just are living out lives that speak of their membership in the family of God. It comes only to those people who are receiving Jesus as the absolute word of God, the light of the world. And so, have you received Jesus today? Are you receiving him today? It's impossible to respond to the person of Jesus without responding to the person of the Holy Spirit, asking Jesus to fill us with his Holy Spirit. I want to finish this teaching with the last verse in this section, verse 14. It's a powerful verse, and I will probably expound more on it next week, but verse 14, then he follows with this word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the promise suggests that because Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, there is a wonderful promise for every spiritual believer that we can let the Word become flesh, that the Word of God can be incarnated in our life. So let me finish with this again. But as many as received Him, to them He gave the power to become sons of God, daughters of God, to those who believe in His name. I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit of God will quicken to your heart the importance of receiving Jesus today and every day. Ask Jesus to fill you with his spirit and he will empower you. He'll give you the the right, the authority, the power to live as a son, as a daughter of God. And he'll empower you to make wise decisions with your life. He'll empower you to live for Jesus and to let the light of Jesus shine through you. Let's pray. Ask God to seal this to our hearts. Lord, thank you for the powerful word of God that speaks to our everyday lifestyle. Lord, help us. Come fill us with your Holy Spirit. 
Let the word become flesh in us. We thank you, Lord, for the promise from Scripture that we have the power and authority to be sons and daughters of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that we can be sons and daughters of God. Help us to live out the life of Jesus. Help us to receive you every day. And as we do that, that there will be a, a current of redemption flowing through our lives that we'll be able to live for you and let the light of the world shine through us. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to do that in these days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening. God bless you. Have a great weekend.